You know, when I was a little kid, I distinctly remember this scene. I'm trying to fight sleep and stay awake because there's one important thing that's happening on TV. And that is a live telecast of our first Indian in space. And it's for, for many of us, that's our first even look at what a spacecraft or an astronaut would look like. And I remember this goosebump moment when Mrs. Indra Gandhi, on a live call with the astronauts, um, asked him, so how does India look from above? And he gave his iconic reply. Do you know what that is? He said, Sare Jahan Se Acha, the best in the world. <laughs> you know, when he came back, um, um, Soviet Union awarded him the Hero of Soviet Union Award, a very prestigious one. And the Indian government felicitated him with the Ashoka Chakra. And for a long career at the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, he served as the chief test pilot and played a very critical role in the formation of the light combat aircraft Tejas. And, and here's another thing that makes me very proud that he could have stayed after retirement in any part of India. And he chose Tamil Nadu as the place to stay, and he lives in Kunnur. And isn't that awesome? So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together to invite Wing Commander Rakesh Sharma, and give him a warm round of applause, please. Sir, it's such a delight and honor to have you amidst us this uh, afternoon. And uh, I must tell you, uh, the first astronaut to go to outer space from our beautiful country to shortlist him, around 250 documents had shifted through the government, wherein a couple of test pilots were selected. And among all those test pilots, a very handful were handpicked. And among those very, very handpicked test pilots, Wing Commander Rakesh Sharma was selected to go to Salyut 7, the orbital station, where he spent seven days, 21 hours, and 40 minutes, uh, 40 minutes uh, doing a lot of experimental stuff, which yesterday I was trying to pull out from him, and he said, nee, nee, that was top secret. I, did, I couldn't even look out of the window and enjoy my beautiful planet. But uh, it was such an amazing uh, experience to just have dinner with this legend. So before continuing, I think he deserves like a standing ovation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. So everybody um, aspires for achieving some particular goal in their lives, you know. They say, I want to aspire and achieve this thing. And I think uh, after spending, uh, you know, going outside and spending so much of time at uh, Salute 7 uh, Orbital Station, and when you came back, um, you know, did you ever feel that, okay, now this was my ultimatum. I have reached, uh, I would, uh, I'd rather say that, what more can I achieve beyond this? So has this thought ever crossed your mind? And if so, uh, how have you dealt with it? Well, this is not going to sound very good, but uh, I never dreamt of going up into space. Um, I merely uh, wanted to be a fighter pilot in the Indian Air Force. And, and I became one, and then some, because then I specialized in test flying. And so um, um, I never thought that I would ever get to fly in space, and primarily because uh, our country, the Indian Space Organization, uh, didn't have a very matured space program. And I mean, when I was a, when I was a kid through school, they had just about started uh, launching a few Nike Apache rockets, which they had got from the United States to release some sodium vapor 
in the upper reaches of the atmosphere. So these were very humble beginnings and, you know, so there was never a manned space program as uh, indeed there isn't one even now. <clears throat> so I just looked at it as a one-off opportunity that uh, fell in my lap. And um, therefore, of course, having been exposed to that uh, uh, cutting edge technology, uh, if I was given a choice, I would have loved to go along that route. But then, like I said, we never had a manned space program. So I don't like to think much of what could have been. I like to live in the here and now. And so returning back to my old job uh, was always on the cards. And uh, so there was no um, feeling of loss or, or anything. I just looked at uh, resuming my uh, exciting and interesting career, which had got interrupted for a while with something more exciting and, and, and more challenging. But returning back was no, not a problem. I know, once a pilot, always a pilot. <laughs> sure, yes. <laughs> Sir, uh, you shunned uh, a public life and actually chose uh, to live in Kuno, uh, far away from all the excitement of uh, what a city could offer. Today, if I had to address this question to the audience where many aspire to achieve fame and position and uh, they relate success to this, but then you've, ha you've seen that, but in spite of that, you've chose not to pursue it or not to kind of uh, be there, but you just, you know, shunned away and you were, you were very happy at Kuno and especially away from the media glare. So what probably message would you like to give uh, my audience uh, as in how, uh, how important do you relate success to money, fame and glamour or because you've seen it, you've tasted it and you made this choice? I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a personal choice in the sense that uh, just to give a context to it, um, here I was, uh, when I returned back from space, I was, I was uh, truly amazed at the, uh, the scale and the uh, depth of uh, emotion that was on view, uh, the way our country folk reacted uh, to the event in general and uh, to myself in particular, and, and I have had a lot of trouble handling it. Uh, as you well know that no military officer or military man is, is ever trained to handle attention and adulation like this. And so I was clearly out of my depth. And, um, and it wasn't, and I started beginning to feel very unreal. And, and therefore, um, I was quite relieved when I could get back uh, and I must say that I engineered my return back to the Air Force a little bit because I, I felt that it, it was a safer haven. Uh, it restored for me my sanity. It, it uh, made uh, that much, it made uh, it difficult for everybody else to gain access to me when I was back uh, with, the, with the Air Force. So really, um, uh, this is the reason why um, you know, but to come back to your question, obviously it's a, it's a personal choice. Some people thrive on it. Uh, I would say politicians and film stars, for them, adulation is like oxygen. I mean, they need to be in the, in the people's eye all the while. Uh, not so for professionals like, like us. So, because I, I believe that it does end up interfering with, with your work and uh, so I was quite happy to get back to where I had come from. Did you think, I mean, your privacy was totally invaded? That you couldn't even go and have a masala dosa before so many people came and mobbed you? <laughs> well, um, you know, it's like this. I think that when you are in that position and more so somebody like me, I mean, it's th 30 years and uh, we still uh, do not have anybody else uh, who I can hand over the mantle to. Um, so when you're in this position, um, 
you have to play a role. I mean, I, I do not believe that uh, I have the right to burst somebody's bubble. It's a mental image that people have formed. So um, it takes, so, so you're really playing a role for a while. And, uh, and it, it's, it's something which, A, you've not practiced for. And personally, I don't enjoy it because it is, I, I'm trying to, 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 to uh, satisfy the expectation or the curiosity of, of those people who've, who've got a certain image of me. And uh, so that, that becomes a bit, a bit tiring, I would say. And, uh, and that's why Kunur, you know, is off the beaten track. Yeah. So. I read that you practiced yoga at Sandhya uh, 7. You were, you know, uh, and uh, as a, a very key uh, dimension of wellness, a physical wellness, uh, sir, do you still practice yoga and how important it is to inculcate physical wellness into a daily lifestyle routine? Um, I did yoga, um, but it was part of the slew of experiments which uh, were designed for us to perform in space. And uh, the aim of the yogic uh, uh, experiment was to train uh, as per the yogic method. The idea was to find out if it provides a better alternative to preparing space crews to adapt easily to the zero-G environment. So uh, about three months before the launch, I stopped training as per the Russian system, and um, I started doing only yoga. So when I went into space, uh, I was prepared only by the yogic method, a certain set of asanas which were modified somewhat. So a purist would perhaps not uh, be very impressed with those modifications, but uh, though they were modified so that they condition the body as it was expected in, in that zero-G environment. And the idea was to compare uh, my adaptation uh, with those of the other Russians who continued to train as per their regimen. So, uh, so that's why I, I did yoga. Um, and uh, I'm, I did not carry on with it because it was, again, a one-off experiment. And personally, I was at that time and even thereafter, till pretty recently, more into uh, high impact exercises, I mean, squash, tennis, and golf, and gymming, and I, I like to feel the breeze on my face when I, when I exercise. So perhaps a bit later, <laughs> you know, um, I, I'll get back to yoga, but I've not been doing it. Uh, having said that, um, uh, it is extremely important, of course, uh, to, to remain fit and all. And I would say that uh, my passport to space was the level of uh, mental, physical fitness which I had. And for that, uh, a sport was a big uh, contributory factor. And uh, so uh, uh, it, it's always a good thing to be fit. It, 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 it affects you positively uh, at many levels, and it worked for me. It got me into space, I would say. Perfect. So that brings us to how important it is to inculcate physical activity into your daily. Yeah. For all you know, you might be the next person going to space. <laughs>